Well, 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 good afternoon, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I'm excited. It's Friday. Ha! I've been released. Hallelujah. I missed you guys so much. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm trying to fix y'all on the stand. I come for a midday word. We haven't done this in a long time, a midday word. Hallelujah. I tr I'm going to try not to belay the hour. We're going to go right into it. I'm trying to get the word up. Give me one second. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. I have really, really missed you guys. How is everyone? Hallelujah. I don't see anything. Praise be to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hold on. I'm just trying to make sure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Somebody give me something. Let me know you can hear me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It is so good. A midday word is on today. So, I just want to see if someone can tell me that they can hear me. Hallelujah. 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 Good afternoon. Can, can somebody chat and tell me they can hear me? Hallelujah. Can you tell me that you hear me? Hallelujah. Yes, you can hear me. Glory to God. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. I got to get rolling because this is going to be a midday word, but I'm so excited to be back on with you guys. It's been a minute, haven't it? It's been a minute, but all is well. We're going to talk real quick. But before we go into talking about my, my midday word I got for you real quick, something to sustain you. Because we need some things to sustain us. Because there's a lot going on. And we're going to touch base on some of those things real quickly. Amen. So, but before we go any further, I want to go into the throne room of prayer with you. Can we do that? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I come to you now with my social media family. I thank you, Lord God, as always, for every life under the sound of my voice. And everyone that may view this video, Lord God, let it touch them in their spirit, Lord God. Let them let it cut where it needs to cut. Let it heal where it he needs to heal. And let it deliver where it needs to deliver. In the name of Jesus. And also, Lord God, help them to surrender all, submit their flesh, Lord God, and continue to turn and repent from their evil ways, Lord God. Draw them closer unto you so that they can realize who they are and whose they are in you. And continue to walk and operate and be all which you created them to be before they was even in the womb. Hallelujah. Lord God, I decrease all the way down. Holy Spirit, have your way. Run this live however you want it. And I annihilate any technical difficulties, any backlash, anything that tries to go against the word. Because when everything else fails and all of heaven, all of the earth pass away, your word will remain. Hallelujah. So I thank you, Lord, for your word. I thank you for the power of the word. Lord, have your way right now, and we give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise, because this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. It's because of your breath that we are alive and well, even under these circumstances, in the name of Jesus. It's because of your breath, I say it again, Lord God, that we are alive and well, Lord God, even under these circumstances, under this pandemic, under this, all these wicked devices going around under all that seems to be going against you your love your love it is your breath it is your grace and your mercy that is keeping us and we thank you for it now have your way have your way holy spirit in jesus mighty and awesome name amen 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 get your bibles your notebooks whatever your devices go with me because we get rabies all over the place i don't have nothing honey nothing normally because how God created me, I like to give, you know, y'all things and be prepared and give you a little, 
you know, research and do some, get some little tips and stuff. Oh no, honey, God said he's doing a new thing. Like he said in his word, old things are passing away and all things are becoming new. That scripture also means old mindsets, old ways that we do things even in the natural must pass away so that all things, new mindset, new ways that you do things must become new. Amen. Hallelujah. But I got some scriptures. Oh, because I he saw so, we made sure I got a few scriptures because we're gonna be all over the place. Amen. All, all I got one thing with just some scriptures on it and just one little um thing I've read for devotionals, and I'm out. Amen. Hallelujah. Go with me to Matthew chapter 6. And please, if someone can catch me, I'm gonna try to slow it down. Make sure you put all these scriptures. In the comment because they are tools for somebody because ain't nobody gonna try to say that they ain't got no tools I'm talking spiritually and you know I'm talking to the men and women of God that call themselves kingdom builders you got word amen I'm giving you on my life today guess what you're held accountable I'm held accountable and I'm giving you some word to you so that you can apply it to your life amen time to grow up time to be big boys and big girls time to put down and get out of those old way of thinking old way of talking old way of speaking in the name of Jesus it's a new day it's a new hour and we're at the end times and we don't have that type of time to keep playing and doing old stuff that's not getting results. Amen. Hallelujah. Go with me to Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. Y'all know, y'all, some of y'all who know me already know my core people. I'm sticking, I'm laying, I'm wrapped up. God got me wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in the Amplified Version because the Amplified Version, that's what it does. Amplify. Guess what? It brings it clear. See what I'm saying? For me. You, as if to say, you can't miss a beat. You can't sit and say you ain't heard, you ain't read that. You didn't see the you didn't see the capital letters. You didn't see the period. You didn't see the comma. The amplified version, that's what it does. It amplifies in your spirit to hold each and every one of us accountable in the name of Jesus. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Familiar scripture to some, some may not. But this is the amplified version. Let's get amplified at lunchtime. Amen. Midday might be morning, noon, and afternoon. But it's afternoon here in Baltimore. And it's hot, baby. I guess that's why I'm hot. Whoo! I am hot, honey. Hallelujah. Let's go. Matthew chapter 6, verses uh, 33. The amplified version says, But first, and most importantly, seek Aim at, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God, and all these things will be given to you also. I'm going to read it again. Matthew chapter 6, some of the... Some of the mm. Enemy trying to tie up my tongue. He been trying to go after my throat and go after my voice inside with six. But I'm an overcomer by the blood of the lamb and by the word of the testimony. He'll never shut up what God got in me and my mouth. Amen. So I know how to deal with him. Keep praying for me. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. The amplified version says, but first and most importantly, seek, aim at, strive after his kingdom. And his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, the attitude and character of God, and all these things will be given to you also. Key words I'm stressing, but first and most important. So first, that comes first, God comes first, and what's more important? More important than anything that's going on, no, that it's more important than anything that's in you, around you, on you, speaking in your ear, talking to you, trying to pull on you first. And most importantly, seek who? Seek Him. Amen. Strive after what we striving after? Are we striving after the pastors? Are we striving after the bishops? Are we striving after other leaders? Are we striving after our husbands? Are we striving after our wives? Are we striving after our children? It says, it says aim and strive after his kingdom. And whose righteousness? His righteousness. And who ways? It says his ways of doing and being right. 
the attitude. Whose attitude we striving to be like? And character? Whose character? Of God. And all these things will be given unto you. Let that marinate for a minute. Roll with me now. Let's go. Somebody put it down. Roll with me to Romans. Uh-oh, we going into the book of Romans. Hallelujah. Go with me to Romans. I'm trying to get there. Help me, Holy Spirit. He's saying, move, Teresa, move. Hallelujah. Because he's doing a mighty, mighty thing. I hear you. I hear you, Jesus. I'm moving. I'm moving, Father. I'm moving. Romans chapter 12. Hallelujah. Verses 2 through 3. Amplified version. Come on. Here it is. Amplified version. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 through 3. And it says, And do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourself what the will of God is. That which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. For by the grace of God given to me, I say to every one of you not to think morally, more highly of himself and of his importance and ability than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment as God has appointed to each a degree of faith and a purpose designed for service. Oh, we're going to work this. Yes, we're going to work that one right now. Hallelujah. First thing, because remember, I always tell y'all, you have a part, God have a part. Amen. Y'all need to get it up in your head when you go into prayer. God is not a genie in the bottle. And every time you ask for something, he's not going to do it. Especially if he's giving you the power and the authority. He's given us all power and authority through Jesus Christ. As if you are a believer. You ain't no believer, you ain't getting it. So let's just, let's just cut that right there. Bottom line. That's non-negotiable. Amen. Let's go. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 through 3. And do not be conformed to what? This what? Do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs. Let me stop right there. Because some of you are sneakily behind the scenes negotiating with the world. And you want God to bless it. And he ain't blessing that mess. Why? Because he said, do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs. Amen. But, here come the but. Still some work to do. But be transformed and progressively changed. As you mature spiritually, okay? When you decide to have a relationship with God, growth happens. You become a little bit wiser than you was when Jesus first found you, just like a baby. When a baby is born, they are an infant for about, hmm, considered to be a year. But if you notice, after really for the first week, their body, they are bigger. They are longer. They're changing. Their faces change. Their hands change. Each day, they start to change. And what do they do? They be conformed. And most of us look like our parents. Amen. That is, 
it says in the scripture, as you mature spiritually. How do you mature spiritually, uh, Sister Teresa? I'm so glad you asked that question because some of us get it twisted. Growing, much growing, um, being mature spiritually is a lifestyle. It's not about because you can read the Bible like it's a book or a magazine. It's not because you can quote scriptures and speak in tongues and roll on the floor and all of that. Growing maturity is when you take the word, you apply it to your life, and it is in you. It is your lifestyle. When people come to you, the word is all in you, all around you, all on you. And it's not that you are a little weird or queer. It's just that you just the walking word of God. You are spiritually mature. And most spiritually matured believers don't talk much, but they speak boy. See, a lot of chitter chatter ain't getting nothing done. Some of y'all need to keep your mouth. Shut. Amen. Then it says, let me let me go. Okay, Holy Spirit. By the renewing of your mind, focus on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourself what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and the purpose for you. Some of y'all keep thinking your purpose is because of what your mama and everyone else tell you that it is. Some of y'all think that your purpose is because of the type of job, the type of car, the type of money you make, that that's your purpose. You far from it, boo. Those things are choices that you made. They ain't had nothing to do with God. God did not make the choices for you. You made them. God so loved the world. I just love it. G-A-V. What did he do? He gave. He gave you free will. So those choices that you make, he ain't make them, you did. So stop trying to hide and say, God, I'm um, God working on me. God ain't working on nobody. He done with creation. He created each and every one of us and given us the ability to do, speak and see and make sound judgments and make decisions according to what we want. How we please or whatever. If you notice, the Lord does not push himself on us. The Lord does not come in and make you have a relationship with him. You're going to choose. So some of you stop making excuses for your lifestyle. Stop making excuses. Trying to be spiritually mature, but you're really not. Because you're going after or you're mimicking or you're just doing something somebody else doing. But your lifestyle, if I was a fly on the wall, your household, you ain't spiritually mature. You ain't trying to live the word. You love the little sounds and the, 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 the prayers of the listening to a pastor and, and all of these leaders. And you love the songs. It just woo, give you chill bumps. But then once after it's over, after church is over. You go back sitting on the couch, talking on the phone, being mean, nasty, cussing, fussing, fighting your husband and your wife, or even cheating on your husband and your wife. You ain't heard a word. You couldn't even remember what the leader, the pastor, the prophet said, and you didn't even think about putting it to your life to help the problems that you have. It's time to really grow up. And some of you, your age, your earth age number, meaning you over 50, but your you is but your mature your maturity in the spirit, you acting like a 12 year old. And God is not pleased, and that ain't cute. Amen. Let me keep going. And it says, uh, I stopped that so that you may prove for yourself what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. For by the grace, by who? By the grace of God, not of man, the grace of God given to me. I say to every one of you not to think more highly of himself. Some of y'all think y'all all that in a bag of chips, a piece of pie, some fruit on the side, and a salad, energy drinking coffee. And of its importance and ability, then he ought to think. 
Some of you, when you tap into your gift, you think that the world, the sun, and the moon rise and set on you. You think when you walk into the presence of people, it's supposed to be all hell you. Since when? Since when? If it wasn't because of the breath that God breathed in you, you wouldn't even be woke today. Y'all better give him praise. Hallelujah, because some did not make it this morning. And you better be happy. I don't care what you got going on. You better be happy that he gave you grace. His grace. His mercy. He loved you enough to put his little finger on your heart to make it beat. And breathe. So you can wake up. And he's, he did all that on the hopes that throughout your day, you would take a moment just for him. Some of y'all go through 24 hours of the day and don't even say, hallelujah, how you doing? Thank you, Jesus. Is it anything I could do for you today? Lord, let me sit and just be quiet. I want you to speak into my ear about anything. No, some of you get up, go on your way. Some of you sit all day worrying. Swatch TV, eyes bugged out because you all letting your ears get clogged up about this coronavirus and all that's what's going on in the world. All of you going psycho, you're letting the enemy take you on a psychological crazy roller coaster. But then when challenged, when you on your psychological roller coaster, you so quick to run to a leader for prayer. Well, here it is, you, if you are a believer, you have the power and authority to pray for yourself. You can pray your mind right. Now, there are some things that, yes, we come together as believers to help and strengthen one another to fight the spirit realm. Oh, some of y'all ain't ready to fight the spirit realm. Y'all speak like you I'm sorry, y'all talk like y'all ready, but your actions and your lifestyle proves that you're not. And some of y'all trying to hit your ride on people and these leaders and pastors and stuff and thinking that you, that's going to get you into eternity. No, but it's your choice. You gonna make up in your mind and your heart who you gonna serve today. Not just you, but those that God give you, even in your household, who you gonna serve. And you can't blame nobody but you. And guess what? For those that like straddling the fence, uh-huh, uh-huh. Even but there are some believers and which some I used to think that was so shocking. When I first came and start to, you know, when I began my relationship with God, it used to shock me to know. That those that know the word, and I'm talking about, and then they still was willing to do what was against the word or what they said. I, I'm like, how did that work? That, that used to, when I was a babe, that messed me up. God had to do like a real dunk and a washing on me. Because I was like, God, okay, I get, we all human. I get that. We all human beings. It doesn't matter. Let's, like I said, take away even the opposite sex. Every single one of us is human. Red blood run through our veins. You breathe your breath into us, God. Okay. Now we make a decision. We decide we want to be a believer. Want to be a Christian. Want to be a believer. We want to serve God. Okay. Then after a while... God, you send someone to help them to understand your word, which your word is a powerful God. Gives us powerful tools. Gives us a, it's a, a we can turn it into a mighty sword. But then somewhere along the line, we get it up in our head. Because we know it's not you, because it's not in your word. That it's okay for me to live ratchet and trifling. It's okay to cuss and have a nasty foul mouth. It's okay to fornicate and sleep with my neighbor's boyfriend. It's okay to go late at night. And drink until I'm drunk and passed out. And smoke a bunch of... It's okay. Somewhere along the line, we like, it's okay for that. 
How did that happen according to your word? And it doesn't match up. And not only that, you know it. But then you try to pass on to people wanting to want, uh, wanting other believers to co-sign with that. We ain't taking on that debt. I'm not taking on that fleshy mess. If you don't make up in your mind and your heart to change your lifestyle, don't try to push it on me and, and have sympathy and empathy. You know, I mean, I know I'm up here sleeping with my neighbor's boy, with my girlfriend's boyfriend. But he need a friend. It's all right. God loves me. God do love you. He don't love the sin that you're in. And if you keep playing like that, he's going to turn you over to that. And you ain't going to be able to run to him in prayer or run to him through other, one of his people to ask to pull you out. Y'all better stop playing with God. And see, some of you as believers are playing with God because he's long-suffering. I'm going to tell you right now. That long suffering can get short and then the wrath of God will kick in quick. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He said, I got the whole, oh, got the move on. But I just wanted to give that nugget. It's funny how people, they want you to pet, pet. They, I'm talking the willful sin. Meaning, you know the word and you know what you're doing and you ain't trying to do nothing about it. Hallelujah. Oh, I got the tiger by the tail now. We got real quiet in the atmosphere globally, I feel. I got the tiger by the tail now. What is it going to do? Nothing. The enemy know I got him now. What are you going to do? Nothing. Because God gave me all power and authority to keep him right where I want him. I'm in control. Amen. And y'all better realize your power and authority and walk in it. In the name of Jesus. That's if you really proclaim the name of Jesus. Some of y'all play. Even in your mind. Even in your attitude. Just because we can't see what's in your mind. It sure enough shows out in your life. And it shows out in your talk. You think ain't nobody see that. Oh because you did the slip of the tongue. Amen. But then you try to dress it up. I'm, I'm a work in progress. Jesus working on me. Jesus done with, God is done with creation. He ain't working no more. He done created us all. Amen. Oh, okay, Holy Spirit. Let's move on. Go with me to the next scripture. Hallelujah. We're going to the book of Psalms. Psalms 91. Who? hallelujah. Pray to, hold on, did I finish this? Scripture. Yes. Psalms 91, God said, I got to get the rolling. Hallelujah. I hope this is helping someone because it's sure enough helping me after the talk me and the Lord had last night. And I'm so excited to be on y'all on a Friday. It is Demon Buster Day, baby. Y'all better, y'all better suit up. It's Friday the 13th, Demon Buster Day. That's what it is in the kingdom. Demon Buster Day. So what you got going on? Are you ready? Are you got your armor on? Do you got your helmet of salvation, your breastplate of righteousness, your belt of truth, your shield of faith, your sword of the word, and your shoes of preparation on? Or are you just trying to hit your ride? And then you are, and then when you see stuff, you don't say nothing. I'm talking in the spirit realm. And you try to pet pet. It's okay. Ain't nothing okay when it's not what God has called and when it goes against the will of God and it goes against the word, it is not okay. Amen. Go with me to Psalms. Hallelujah. 91. That's where we're going. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Woo -woo. Psalms 91, verse 1. He says, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the Almighty whose power no enemy can withstand. I'm going to read that again. That's in the Amplified. Psalms 91 verse 1 says, and it talks about the security of the one who trusts the Lord. I ain't saying nothing about trusting man. I ain't saying nothing about trusting the devil. I ain't even saying nothing about trusting yourself. It's trusting the Lord. 
He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the Almighty whose power no enemy can withstand. See, your problem is you better remember we can depend on God. You can depend on God. It says it right there. Some of you don't know how to dwell. Some of you run when you need to be running to God. You run to man first. And then when you in your feelings and then when you don't get the answer that you want, then you want to go into prayer. No, you should have went to God first. Amen. Some of y'all got to get up out your feelings too much. Y'all and y'all, y'all and y'all flesh too much. Some of y'all so wrapped up, tangled up, tied up in your flesh that your flesh is controlling you to make decisions, but you always try to pass it off. That is God. And like I keep telling y'all, God going to say to all, all of his believers, y'all going to stop this thus said the Lord stuff. Because God don't speak when you in your flesh or when you in willful sin. He going to wait till you make up your mind and your heart to come to him. He don't play them type of games. You're misrepresenting him. He ain't speaking to nobody. Because God, if God, and then some of y'all who keep thinking God speak every five seconds. He ain't going to speak every five seconds when here it is. You ain't even do what he said the first time. Or you ain't even working on that. No, that's just all your mess. That's your fleshy mess. Because you're trying to reason in your mind and you're trying to uh, get permission to do and, and saying, well, I think the Lord want me to do this. And I'm going to do it. It ain't even some of the stuff y'all doing ain't even scripture. Y'all, boy, because us him, we can make up some stuff. And then y'all want to pass it off and then pass it off for people and trying to get people to agree with you on stuff that you know God said don't do. Don't say, don't even think. Let's start with yourself. Amen. He said, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will remain secure, even under the pandemic. He who dwells in the shelter of the who? Of the Most High. If you dwelling in the shelter of the TV, no, boo, you will not remain secure. If you dwelling in the shelter of listening to listening to your girlfriends, your friends, and all this and all that, you will not remain secure. If you if you keep on dwelling in the shelter of your own mind, because some of y'all don't need to go up in your own head without adult supervision, because your mind is just nasty and just trifling. It's just all messed up in there. And for and God won't even and that's the part. See, that's when I, I be like, God, you need you should just make us robots. Cause sometimes we can think of stuff and, and, and just get our minds right. Cause some of y'all make decisions out of your mind. Your mind all jacked up. That's why your life all jacked up. Cause you make decisions out of your mindset. And then you don't want to be taught. Or you don't want to be corrected. And then when someone tries to come along and correct you and help you, oh now all of a sudden they ain't of God. That ain't God. Oh, no, because what? What I said and what I showed you according to the word of God is not comfortable to your raggedy mindset and raggedy lifestyle. And I'm just trying to give you, as they say, you lead the horse to the well, but you can't make him drink. I can see in your raggedy mind and spiritually you're dying of thirst. But because the water is not comforting water, it is water that is to make you mature water. It is water that makes you accountable water. It is water that makes you teachable water. Oh, it ain't of God all of a sudden. Some of you will listen to people first do what they say. Because some of them will say things and tickle your ear and it makes you feel comfortable because you don't go out your comfort zone. So you, you'll you believe them, but you won't believe the word of God. I don't get that. I don't get I don't care if they got a title or not. I don't get that. You rather take a chance with your life, your spiritual life, off the word of someone that don't even have an IQ higher than yours. And here it is, the word is free. It's free. Some people you got to pay for. Sit there before you even could talk. I was talking to somebody and they were looking for an attorney. And they, all they had was a question. I guess there ain't no such thing as free cons. I can't even get the word. A consultation today. Or, you know, just ask a question. They told me that they felt, they, 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 um, 
uh, found something online, and they and they uh, I guess the, the 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 place had a form, and they put their question in, and then they got the reply back saying to answer your question, the fee will be three hundred and sixty dollars. I was like, what? Three hundred and sixty dollars just to ask a question? We didn't get, first of all, I asked the question which will prelude if I need an attorney or if I need services. But I, just to sit with you, I got to pay a fee? Hold up! Wait a minute! But in the kingdom, some of y'all act like that. Ooh, I got the tiger by the tail, honey. Some of y'all sit up here proffer lying to people. Proffer lying, y'all. This ain't the time. This is the end time. This ain't the time to be proffer lying and no proffer lying. And then want to throw the curveball saying, the Lord said, if you sow a seed. I got to give you a seed for you to tell me something from the Lord when here it is. The word is free, and for real though, I can get it for myself. But see, some of y'all forget that. Some of y'all forget that. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Let's move on. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you bad. God is good, even in this pandemic. And I don't know why y'all freaking out because of the pandemic. The coronavirus and her boyfriend, the Delta variant. You better read your Bible. See what I'm saying? But some of y'all are falling by the wayside. Don't get weary now doing good. Don't get weary now. You claim you love the Lord. Don't get weary now. You claim that you'll do anything that the Lord tells you to do. Don't get weary now. Because some of you are using it as a distraction and you're using what you see on TV and what's going on in the, as a, in the world as an excuse not to do what God tell you to do. But yet you think you want to hit your ride and pimp him or hit your ride on one of his other people and thinking that, oh, my lifestyle is okay. Because I got a Christian girlfriend or a Christian boyfriend or I got a pastor, I got a prophet. Oh, my lifestyle, oh God, God is going to accept me. Since when? When? Hold up. Thank you, Holy Spirit. He said, that's right. Since when? Let's go to, let me see on my paper. First John. I wasn't going to go there, but Holy Spirit said, go right there. First John. Woo. Hell. I'm going, Holy Spirit. I'm going. Uh, where is it at? First John 1, 9. Y'all know, some of y'all know the scripture. Hallelujah. Amplified version. If we, it come work freely, no price tag, admit that we have sinned and confess our sins. He is faithful. Meaning, he ain't going to backstab you. He ain't going to talk about you. He ain't even going to charge you. You see what I'm saying? He ain't even going to ask you to give him no money. He ain't going to ask you to do no flips, no cartwheels, no nothing. He ain't going to ask you to pretend to be something that you're not. He is faithful and just. True to his own nature. And promises. See, God is up to Some of y'all act like y'all know, but you don't know him. You act like you know, but you don't know him. You better get into this word. He is, he is faithful and just and true to his own nature and promises and will forgive our sins and cleanse us continually from all unrighteousness. Our, our wrongdoing, everything, not conformity with his will and purpose. Now, let me stop here because it just hit me, Holy Spirit. You mean to tell me? If we just confess, we only got to do one little tiny thing. Meaning, we ain't even doing physical work. This doesn't require physical work. This doesn't require being phony plastic and acting like this. This ain't, this don't even require you acting. Like I say, acting like. You mean tell me, God, all we got to do 
is open our mouth. Freely admit, meaning honestly admit, that we have sinned. We, all we got to do is open our mouth and honestly admit that we have sinned. And you mean to tell me, you God, even though I did and I said a lot of stuff and I'm living a lifestyle contrary to your word and I know it. And I know it. You mean to tell me, God, you going to still be faithful. You God. You still going to be true to your own nature, God, and your promises. And you're going to forgive me. And you're going to wash me up from all of what I've been doing that I know that is contrary to your word. Everything that is not conformity with his will and purpose. You going to do all that? Yes, he is. See, that's the type of love that you don't get from me. Because <laughs> our love can be conditional. Ain't nobody going to love you unless you do this. Ain't nobody going to listen to you unless you do that. Ain't nobody going to let you join their stuff unless you do this. Ain't nobody going to let you do this because of that. See what I'm saying? But with God, you're not. One thing is, and that's only because he's a jealous God. So don't don't get that twisted. Don't get what I said twisted. Hear what I'm saying? Because some of y'all will take that and think that, oh, you can jump and come to people and they just supposed to accept your stuff. No, nah, no, you won't, boo. I, 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 I don't accept sin. Guess what? God doesn't accept sin. Why? Because he just said, you have to do a work in order for him to truly accept you. You have to freely confess. You don't do that. He ain't obligated to be faithful and just to you. Some of y'all get that twisted. Y'all think y'all can do and say what you want to say and God's still supposed to be faithful. Since when? When the Bible says he's a jealous God. You will not think that you're going to sleep with the devil and then in the morning come up there, come back home to the Lord. No, you won't. They don't play them type of games, boo. Just like relationship. No, you won't. You won't be out all night hanging with the devil, fornicating and drinking up with the devil, and then in the morning you want to be all booed up with the Lord. No, you won't, boo. You're going to make a choice. That's why he gave us free will. No, you won't. You won't play them type of games. The hour is too late, men and women of God. Too late. You better make up, your, you better make up in your heart and your mind who you're going to serve. Uh, Let's go, Holy Spirit. Next scripture, go with me to First Peter. As a going father, he said, her, he said, teach it and cut her. keep it going, my daughter. I'm moving, father. I'm moving, trying to type fast as I can. First Peter chapter one. Verses 15 through 16. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 15 through 16, the Amplified Version says, But like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourself in all your conduct. Be set apart from the world by godly character and moral character because it is written you shall be wholly set apart for I am holy God is up to he said that don't get mad with me I'm just the messenger giving it to you. Because some of y'all going to sit and y'all going to try to handpick that. Y'all going to try to pity pat patty wet because we in the end days with that. Uh, 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 uh. God ain't playing with it. Every capital letter, every period is there. He says, be like the Holy One. That means be like him. Be like his son. He gave, He so loved the world. Christ was our example. Who called you? 
Who called you? Your mama didn't call you. Your husband didn't call you. Your bishop didn't call you. Your evangelist didn't call you. Be like the holy one who called you. Be holy yourselves. What? It says all your conduct. It doesn't say a little bit of your conduct. And be set apart from the world. Now what that means is your lifestyle and your mindset. You cannot think like the world and you can't live like the world. Some of y'all got a problem with that. Some of y'all think y'all can serve God and still want to um, do worldly stuff. No, boo. You can't put new wine in old wine skin. You're going to make a choice. Amen. Then it says, be set apart from the world but your godly character and moral character. Make up your mind. See, that's how you represent God well. Because your godly and moral character should be the same. Amen. Because it is written. Uh-oh. Ah. See, you, so you can get mad with me all you want. Because this is written. Ha. It is written. And it's in God's words. You shall be holy. Set apart. Why? Because I'm holy. If you say that you got a relationship with God and you're in the image of God, then you should be holy. You should be like him. You should be striving. He already know you're not perfect. Stop using that as an excuse. But your heart and your spirit and your mind should be holy. Your talk and your walk should be holy. Are you going to make mistakes? Yes. But the moment that your mind realized that you made a mistake, you better confess, you better repent, and you better get back to be holy. Oh, see, y'all want to do that work. Oh, that's the problem today. Oh, that's too much work for some of y'all. To be holy in your mindset. To be holy at home. Behind closed doors. Because God did. Even though I ain't dead, God did. He know when you're holy and when you're not. When you look like him and act like him. And talk like him. And walk like him. And give like him. And receive like him. He knows. You can play with us human beings all day long. But you can't play with God. Amen. Whoo! I got to move. I think I got one more. Hold up. Let me see. Help me, Holy Spirit. We had a lot going on. We had a lot going on. Um, go with me to Philippians. Okay, Holy Spirit. We're going to the book of Philippians. I appreciate those that are rolling with me and putting these scriptures down here because I have people that I talk to on a regular and sometimes they get a little am, am, spiritual amnesia like they ain't had no scriptures and words. Oh, you got you got scripture today, especially for the EGRs, you know. Y'all need this. All right, Holy Spirit. He said, don't even talk because we just got to deal with one when we get off of here because... Y'all just do too much. And God don't require all of that. Just do what God says when he says and how he says it. Amen. Go with me to the book of Philippians. I'm going, Father. I'm going. The book of Philippians. Uh-oh. Go with me to the book of Philippians. Chapter 2. Verses 9 through 10. Amplified version. For it says, For this reason also, because he obeyed and so completely humbled himself, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, Every knee, <laughs> every knee going to shall bow in submission of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, meaning the demons. Hallelujah. Y'all better speak the name of Jesus, but you better not speak it if you are not serious and if it's not a lifestyle. 
Stop robbing yourself. Some of y'all want to play God. You ain't got to play God with him. He will, he will actually come into your life if you choose to. That's the part. Some of y'all lazy in the spirit. Y'all some lazy believers. Some of y'all some lazy spiritual beings. Don't you think Christ did enough on Calvary? You mean tell me you can't at least give him an hour a day? Don't you think Christ did enough? He was beaten over 24 hours. He died on the third day for you. Then he got back up for us. Don't you think he gave his blood's worth just in the hopes that you would sit down and say, God, come into my life. I'm ready to listen to you. Speak, O oh Lord. Your servant is here at your feet, listening and ready to obey. Oh, y'all ain't ready for that. Y'all ain't ready for that. God told me some of y'all still are spiritual infants. You ain't ready for that. That's why some of your prayers are taking a long time to be answered. Because some of y'all want to still be a spiritual infant. You 50 years old and you're a spiritual infant. Get out of here with that. That don't even go together. And guess what? You know what's in your heart comes out. Even when you're spiritually immature. Amen. I got, I think, one more. Go with me. Uh oh. We're going. I tell you, we all over the place. Go with me to the book of Isaiah. Oh, I got 10 minutes and I'm done. Hallelujah. Go with me to the book of Isaiah, chapter 55. Oh, we're going serious. Okay, Holy Spirit, I'm moving. We're going to Isaiah, chapter 55. Verse 11, Amplified Version says, So will my word be which goes out of my mouth. It will not return to me void, useless without result, without accomplishing what I desire, and without succeeding in the matter for which I, which I sent it. Thus said the Lord. How many of y'all really believe that? God said that his word, that means even every word, he gave us the scripture. Every word, the scripture is, it is God's breath. He breathed, he talked it, and the words just jumped in the thumb on the paper. He spoke the word. It says every it will not return to me void, meaning his word will never come back and not fulfill the purpose for which it was sent. Now, if we have the power and authority because we're joint heirs with Christ, that's why it's very imperative that you watch what you say and watch what you speak. Because even if it doesn't come back to you, it can land somewhere else. But it will fulfill the purpose in which you spoke it. That's why you need to watch your mouth. Even when you're having conversations with family and friends. Civil conversation. Watch your mouth. That's how powerful your words are. Even when you're on the phone with your girlfriend or boyfriend. Watch your mouth. Watch the words that come out of your mouth. That's how powerful words are. Amen. Go with me to one more. Go with me to Jeremiah. Go in the book of Jeremiah. Real quick. I'm moving forward. Chapter one. Come on, Teresa Vaney. My fingers, the enemy trying to trip my fingers up. Chapter one, verse 12. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am actively watching over my word to fulfill it. You can depend on God. 
Because whatever God told you, he said, I am actively watching over my word to fulfill it. So whatever word God gave you, whatever he spoke over your life, he is always actively watching over it to make sure that it is fulfilled. You just have to understand that it will be fulfilled in his timing. Why? Because it was his word that was spoken over your life. But the problem also, a problem can come in is when you are not in position, when you decide not to receive the word, or when you decide to forfeit and not do what thus said the Lord, then guess what? The word that God has spoken, even though he is watching over it so that it can be fulfilled, we can get in the way. And then that's why some of your bless, some, some of your prayers are delayed because of you. It ain't because of God, because God gave the word. If God said yes, it's yes. If he said no, it's no. Y'all better stop pity packing, playing, paying with this. It's time to grow up. But you all through it all, you can depend on God. Amen. I think I got one more. Second Corinthians, because I'm still kind of full. I'm going to wrap it up for you. Second Corinthians. Hallelujah. Go with me to 2 Corinthians, hallelujah, chapter 6. Woo! Go with me to 2 Corinthians. Ho! Ha, this is this the last scripture. Go in, Jesus, you're bad. Last one for the road. 2 Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 17 through 18. The Amplified Version says, so, come out from among unbelievers and be separated, says the Lord. Let me hit that one again. God says that. I hope y'all got your Bibles. Sep he said, so come out from among unbelievers and be separated, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean. And I will graciously receive you and welcome you with favor. And I will be your I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. What part y'all ain't getting? Don't be playing around now at the end times with this virus and stuff like that. And when it's making decisions on your life, if you say that you are a believer and a child of God, God said, come out. From unbelievers and be separated. When y'all gonna stop? When some of y'all gonna stop pretending to be a child of God and really be a child of God, huh? When you really gonna start listening to Him, Amen. And He said, "Don't touch nothing that's unclean." Y'all let me run down the sins. The sin, I think it's in Galatians. Y'all know. It's, see, He just mentioned those, but anything that is contrary. To what God tell you to do is unclean. And it ain't beneficial for you. So when y'all going so when we gonna get so when men and women of God, so-called kingdom builders, where are the real leaders, the real prophets, the real pastors, the real evangelists, the real bishops, everybody that's not trying to have an agenda all the time? When you're gonna come out from unbelievers, some of y'all so worried about your reputations, worrying about your money, money get ready to go out of style. You know why? Because when Jesus come back, it ain't even going to be worth nothing. It ain't going to be worth nothing in eternity. Some of you some of you got your mind so wrapped up about so-called earthly prospering. When you're going to come out from the unbelievers? Some of y'all up here behind the scenes. Y'all still want to play God. Y'all want y'all want to be like Nicodemus in a sense. Y'all want to go sneakily at night and, and sit and talk. But then when it come daytime, now you want to be like you're a Pharisee. When are you going to come out? But you want the favor of God. He says, do not touch what he said. And I will graciously receive you and welcome you with favor. That's if you come out from, un, from, un, from with the unbelievers and don't touch stuff that's unclean. Stop touching other men's wives. Stop touching other uh, women's husbands and boyfriends. Stop touching. You see what I'm saying? A lifestyle. Stop, stop touching stuff to hurt you. Stop overly drinking, smoking. It's dangerous to your health. It says it on the box. How much more do you need? Stop fornicating with people that you're not married to. 
unclean. Oh, the tiger tight now. Stop sex texting. Sex to text or whatever. With people that you shown up ain't going, you don't desire to marry. You just like to hear the words. <laughs> unclean. Stop speaking filthy language out of your mouth. And then, then going to try to call yourself holy after you just cut somebody out. Unclean. Wash your little mouth out with the word of God. Your little filthy self. Stop sitting up here holding grudges. Unclean. Stop sitting up here backbiting. Unclean. Stop sitting up here playing with witchcraft. You trying to get somebody to... You want to go talk to a prophet to tell you about your future. Unclean. You see what I'm saying? And I'm talking as far as the motive of your heart. Unclean. Some of y'all watch a bunch of pornography. Unclean. Oh, I'm calling it out. Lunchtime. I ain't been... Ooh, he released me today. <laughs> Ooh, Jesus, he know I love him. Yes, we got a lot to talk about. Unclean. So come out from among unbelievers and be separated, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean, and I will graciously receive you and welcome you with favor, and I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughter, says the Lord Almighty. How bad do you really want what God has to birth out in you? I gave that word. I know, I see a couple people, I know they remember that one. How bad do you really want it? How bad do you want a new lifestyle? But guess what? Don't, don't talk it. Walk it. Walk it, baby. And be proud of it. Some of y'all talk too much. And you ain't got no power. You ain't got no power. Some of y'all think y'all got power. That's the problem. You think it. But it ain't sure. You ain't got no power. You ain't got no poof. So what you can speak in tongues? So what you can spit out the, uh, the whole book of uh, the whole book of John's and Matthew's or whatever? But you ain't even living there. You ain't got no power. Soon as a demon run up, you running. Or you ready to call every Tom, Dick, and Harry, Sue, and Murray that claim to be a believer to help you fight a spiritual matter when here it is God gave you all power and authority to take him down and keep him under your feet. Stop playing. When are you going to come out? Amen. <laughs> Teresa Vini, I need teach, speak, woman of God. He let me out today. And some of y'all who know me know what I mean. He let me out today. Oh, today is a good day. It's Friday, baby. Demon buster day. See what I'm saying? Some of you need to take a self-evaluation on your life. Some of y'all need to stop jumping on, jumping from group to group, platform to platform. I'm trying to find myself. Go to God. God working on me. No, he not. You just don't want to be accountable for your stuff. You just, you know what you're doing. You just don't want to do what God said. Because you want it done your way. Your little selfish self. God knows you selfish. You know your little heart raggedy and selfish. Your little mindset. I'm just saying. I'm a work in progress. Well, we all a work in progress. It's time to grow up and be accountable for what you do, what you say, and what you are. Amen. And it's time for you to walk fully in what God had created you to be. Enough is enough. When you going to grow up? Jesus come back soon as I click this thing off. I'm going to tell you right now. Y'all know most of y'all right now, right now, right now, not going. Because of what's going on in your home, what's going on in your heart, you're not going. I don't care if you prayed to him this morning or whatever. If that heart ain't right and if it's too much sin in the camp, you ain't going. And, it's, and I'm talking about the willful sin. You ain't going. Because that can't go into kingdom. That can't go into eternity. Amen. I love y'all. Tell me. I'm, I'm on fire. But my, I'm out. Thank you, Father. I'm out. He said he loves us enough. Sometimes he has to use some of his people to give a, a wake-up call. If you're going to read the scriptures... Then obey the scriptures. Don't deceive yourself. Oh, that's the scripture. That's in there. Do I got that on my paper? No, I ain't get that one. But, oh, I want to say this to you guys. 
Mm, I wrote this. I had to write this. We have all been given all authority in heaven and on earth, and yet we do not use it. If prayer groups were established and taught to go into warfare, all of God's people would arise to become the light of the world. See, some of y'all, y'all join up with people and y'all just be like, pray for me. And y'all sit there together and y'all pray and you in a prayer group and how they are there and they, they quoting scriptures. But it ain't no power. When you walk away from that group, you don't feel like you should have the authority or you in charge of your spiritual life and that you believe God. Y'all just hear the same old thing, same old thing, you know. God loves you. Okay, we know that. But we got, you got spirits in your house. Your husband jacked up. Your kids and your grandkids. Oh, when you, and you see them spirits up in there. You got teens living in your basement acting like they grown. When you going to get rid of them? That's what God's saying. When we going to deal with that? But you want to call, you want to be in these groups and these prayer groups and do these assignments. You know, God loves me. He working it out. God has a part and you got a part. You better wake up to your part. You better wake up, men and women of God, because the hour is up. You better be ready to take a stand and fight. Some of y'all ain't ready. Thus said the Lord. And some of y'all going to get beat up bad, and y'all getting beat up now. And y'all keep on trying to hide behind people and hide behind stuff. You see what I'm saying? Thinking that that's going to get you. Uh-uh. You better get that word in you. You better get that word in you. Some of y'all talk too much. But you're not speaking enough. Hey Amen. That was a song. You talk too much. You never shut up. Yeah, thank you all that. I remember that. You talk too much. Homeboy, you never shut up. But you ain't speaking enough. Hey Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Ooh, ooh, I'm running a little behind. Hallelujah. I hope this helped you because it helped me. I'm powered up now. It's Demon Buster Day. It's Friday, y'all. Now, let's see who get off the line and come out from the unbelievers. Let's see who come out from the way of your thinking. Let's see if you come out and change. Your, some of y'all need to make things right with certain people. Some of y'all need to speak and clean your house out. Some people y'all need to kick out. I don't care if it's the coronavirus out there. You up here co-signing with that sin up in your house? You need to put them out. You need to put them out. Amen. Some of y'all got a call too. But let us pray. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Lord, you are such an awesome and magnificent God. And it ain't none like you. And I always let you know. And you know since, I, since you came. And I came when I first smelt your presence at the age of six. I'm not living this life without you. Hallelujah. I thank you for the areas that you are working on, Lord God. I thank you that you help me every day to kill this flesh, Lord God. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord God, that you empower my spirit and you've taught me to help myself and others how to use the power and the authority that you freely so given to us. Lord, you are all that. And it ain't enough, it's not enough words to describe how great you are. It's nothing we can do, say, or even think. You are so holy. You are so holy. And those of us, we really strive, and we're going to continue to strive to be holy. We're going to strive to be set apart. Because you called us out. Many you have called, and few are chosen, because the ones you've called, because you gave them free will, you're not going to go against their decision. So, Lord, help them. Holy Spirit, continue to help them to make the right decisions in their mind, in their thoughts, in their deeds. Hallelujah. Lord, as we are in the posture, in your presence right now, continue to send the angels, Lord God. Send your mighty angels, your fighting angels to the sick and shut-in, to the divorced, the singles, the brokenhearted, every married couple, Lord God. Those that are struggling right now in their mindsets, 
due to this pandemic, those that are suffering mental illness, those that are homeless, Lord God, those that are suffering from catastrophe, storms, they have their lives have been turned upside down. Lord God, those that have been are struggling with the loss of loved ones, whether it's due to this pandemic or if they've naturally lost someone. Lord, we need your ministering angels to come quickly the moment they speak. But Lord, help us to be patient to wait. Because just like you took, just like the angel told Daniel, I heard you. I heard your prayer. But they had to fight the angelic beings that's going on to get to fulfill your prayer. Some of us want to rush, rush prayer. Lord God, some things are being held up in the spirit realm. But Lord, those of us who are faithful and true and in upstand, uh, and standing uprightly to you, Lord, continue to help us to stand. Because we know that what we have petitioned in prayer will come to pass. In the name of Jesus. I decree it and declare it over your people. Whatever we decree and declare and annihilate, it will be done. Hallelujah. Lord God, we love your word. Let it cut where it needs to cut. Let it heal where it needs to heal. And let it continue to deliver where it needs to deliver to set your people free. And Holy Spirit, those that you are tugging on, the spirit of those that need to come and get saved. There are some unbelievers who wants to be believers, but there are things in their lifestyle that they don't want to let go. Keep tugging at them, Holy Spirit. Tug at them hard because the hour is up. And God, it's your, you created this. You gave us this. You can come back whenever you're ready. And most of us are ready, but it's not enough of us that are ready. So, Lord, help all of us to be ready when you come back. And I thank you for using me. I thank you for my social media family, everyone under the sound of my voice, and everyone that may hear this word. Lord God, let them take the word. Let them take the scriptures. Let them take the tools and apply it rightly and to walk and be the living testimony. And let them be and represent you well in all that they say, think, and do because there are some people that look into the spirits of others and they will be the only Bible, the only living word that they can get to. And those of us that may be like that, Lord God, let our motives continue to stay pure to help serve and pray for your people. I give you all the glory and honor for it now. And Lord God, I decree and declare long life over everyone that is connected unto me. I decree and declare prosperity. Lord God, I decree and declare healing of their mind, their hearts, and their spirit. I decree and declare that they will be teachable, they will be faithful, they will be available, and they will continue to be committed unto you. In the name of Jesus. Lord God, have your way and continue to grow us up. And we love you and we thank you for it all now. In Jesus' mighty and awesome name. Amen, amen, amen. And it is so. And it is so. Amen. It was so good. I got to go. But I, I can't leave because I'm excited. It's Friday. Damon busted. The, oh, he shouldn't have let Teresa Vaney out on a Friday. But he did. Hallelujah. Let me see who on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's okay. Some of y'all can't receive this anyway. And it's all good because I ain't for everybody. But God, but people need people. Take that up with God. He made that. See what I'm saying? But y'all better decide who you still have free will to choose who is for you. Amen. Let me see who on. Hallelujah. Eyes out of here. Hold up. Let me, I don't want to touch too far. Let's see who on. Woo. Yeah, let me see who on. Oh, Sister Von said on. Oh, hi, Sister Von said on. Oh, Sister Robin on. Hi, Sister Robin. Sister Bernice on. Hi, Sister Bernice. Oh, how are you doing? Oh, they coming up. Hi, Miss Catherine. How you doing, Miss Catherine? Oh, how you doing? Oh, and big shout outs to my, I got some new followers. God bless you. Mwah, 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 my new followers. It's so good to be journeying with you. I know sometimes, because I've been talking to some of you behind the scenes, I'd be a little rough. But it's okay, because my heart is for, my, my intentions of my heart is just to make sure that you stay focused and stay walking according to what God called you to do. That's it. I 
do what God told me to do when I sit down. I ain't got time playing. We, we ain't got time to keep playing games, folks. I ain't got time because I don't want nobody playing no games with me. Amen. But I thank you so much that you, that whatever God told you about me and we and you joined with me, I'm excited. Through the good and the bad. And some of y'all some strong. I mean, y'all strong. See, some of y'all, y'all y'all can handle a little scratch and don't run. I love you. I tell you, I, I thank you. God bless you, my new followers. Who else saw? I said, hi, Miss Joss. Oh, yeah, I see Miss Joss. So let me touch a little bit. Hey, Marcia. Marcia in the house, y'all. Marcia, it's so good. Oh, I missed you. <laughs> I know we Texas, stuff, but it's been a long time since I see you on my line. Marcia in the house. Oh, you know, I'm going to text you. Woman of God, thank you so much. You have been a blessing to me. Trust and believe we have to talk soon. You truly have over the years been a blessing to me. And we have to definitely catch up and share on some things how you have been a blessing. I know it's been rough and you have been going through some things, but you have been a blessing to me. God bless you for joining me. Oh, my cousin. <laughs> You know, he takes care of me when I travel. That's my personal travel agent, yo. He takes care of his cousin. Oh, my, thank you. So Boy, he preached a word. Hey, a few uh, Sundays ago, had me jumping up on the bed like George Jefferson. Thank you so much, cuz, for joining me this afternoon. God bless you. Who else saw it? Hi, Cheryl. <laughs> That Cheryl is in the house. Hi, Cheryl. Cheryl, Cheryl. <laughs> that was that's my sister. Cheryl, it's been a minute. I hope all is well with your family. Oh, it is so good. It is so good. Let me hurry up and get my shout outs. It's so good to see uh, that you joined me. Oh, Cheryl. Oh, I miss you. We got to talk soon. God bless you. Let's see who else saw. I don't see how. Hey, Sister Q is in the house. How you doing, Sister Q? God bless you for spending the afternoon with me. Thank you so much. Who else is on? Oh, it's getting stuck. I don't want to keep touching stuff. Oh, they wiggling now. I think I better stop touching. I think I better stop touching. Because I don't want it to go out. Hallelujah, but I thank y'all. It's stuck. Uh, it says it's stop. I'm gonna stop touching because I don't want the recording be messing up and stuff like that. But y'all make my heart for real. Seriously, y'all. You can't fake the whole you can't fake when you got a relationship with God. Right, wrong, and different, even when people get on your nerves. The power and the joy. God gave it to me and no man can take it away. But it does my heart good. I thank you because you could have spent your time anywhere else. And I thank my followers. I thank those that at least think of me and spend time. And they text me and ask me how I'm doing. See what I'm saying? That's priceless right there. See, people thinking that, you know, it's all about money and stuff. It's just a thought. You thought enough to think of me. That's priceless. And I don't take that lightly. Amen. But we got to do better, men and women of God. We definitely have to do better on loving, caring, taking care of, and helping one another, even teaching and even helping other one another to understand God's word. Amen. And so that we can all be ready. He loves us with an everlasting love. Don't think that. Sometimes he has, he chastises. He, yes, he does. The ones he loves. He ain't chastising no demon. He don't love them. Love what God loves. Yep. And we can hate what God hates. We can hate the devil because he hates us. You know his agenda. So some of you need to stop playing and letting him destroy your lives and destroy your family lives. He's out to steal, kill, and destroy you and everyone connected to you. So stop playing. When you know you see spirits and you see stuff going on around you that's not right, don't even walk past that imp. Here it is, you walking in your house and the daggone demon got his feet up on your coffee table because he's in there with your daggone young teen adults. Kick him out! Because you got the power and authority of Christ. Amen. I love y'all so much. God bless y'all immensely. 
I'm not sure when I'll be back on, but I promise you, those of you who really know me, you know I carry you in my heart, and we communicate, and, and those that I may not get to and stuff, you, if you know me by the Spirit, you've been following me for so many years, I thank you for the journey, and you know we got more to journey, because we still here together. Amen. Some of y'all stay out the TV. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to get tired of saying that, but it frustrates me because when I see people so consumed with, with the world and then they let it, um, when they make choices, it makes them be disobedient to what God had told them to do. That's the part I don't like. You see what I'm saying? When you clearly have instructions, but you be so consumed about what others say. We're only supposed to be informed, not consumed. Amen. The world do what it do. God's people is going to do what God do. Amen. We have examples. We have a leader. We have a father. Amen. Do what your father told you to do. Enjoy your life. Stop being all crazy deep. Some of you need to smile and laugh more. That's why God created the body to laugh. Laughter makes you live long and laughter. You better laugh so you can last. Amen. You can last through this. You better laugh some stuff off. Stop looking so mean mugging all the time. Amen. God ain't create you. You was not created to go to work, go to school, go to work, pay bills, and die. That's not the life that, that, that Jesus lived. That's not living in your royalty. Amen. So I love y'all so much. God bless y'all. Um, you can review the video here within a couple of hours on Facebook. You can also come to my YouTube page and see it. Also, it will be uploaded on the webpage, spiritualincrease.com. You can also see, review this message. Someone should be putting it up in a group I'm in, Soldiers on Fire for Christ. They are soldiers on fire for Christ. No ifs, ands, buts about it. Ain't no hidden agendas. They are soldiers, exactly what it say, on fire for Christ. They not soldiers on fire for the devil. They not soldiers on fire for the world. They not soldiers on fire for themselves. They're not soldiers on fire for just doing, you know, all for the whatever. They are soldiers on fire for Christ. They're striving to live according to what God has said in his word and what God had called them to do. They are living to help serve and pray for one another. Amen. And for others. Amen. So some of you need to come over there and check out Soldiers on Fire for Christ. And they do if you have a prayer request. Because they got some mighty prayer warriors over there and they not playing. Don't waste their time. If you all about playing, don't waste their time. I'm being honest. Because see, we know we all know the motives of our heart. If you have a serious, if you have a prayer request, and sometimes your prayer requests don't have to be all deep evil. But if you just want someone to intercede on your behalf or just to stay in agreement with you, you know, send them an e uh, send them an email, a prayer request to their email, which is soldiers on fire for Christ at gmail.com. Amen. That's all you gotta do. That's all you gotta do. Real simple, not that deep. We, it, the hour is up. We ain't got time to be deep no more. It's time for you to do what the word says. Do what God says when he says how he says it. It's time for you to continue to work with forgiveness. When you forgive someone, you cannot bring it up to them. You can't talk about it and you have to learn to forget about it. Some of you got y'all holding grudges against people for 20 years. Get out of here with that. That ain't going into eternity. Some of y'all holding grudges. Y'all can remember something. Somebody, she, oh, I don't like her because she took mama plate before mama died. What? That was, your mama been gone 20 years. Get out of here with that. That ain't going into eternity. And then some of y'all better learn how to fully repent. Those willful things, those lifestyles that you know is not pleasing unto God, repent. Get rid of that person, that thing, and change your life. If you got to uproot and leave, to leave that area of that atmosphere so that you won't be so tempted and be willful to that sin, then that's how you do true repentance in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's stop playing, men and women of God. The hour is up. What you going to do? Who you choose to serve? Who you choose to serve? You gonna serve God? Who you gonna serve the devil? And guess what? Are you are you gonna serve yourself? God throw you in there too. Amen. It is twenty twenty one. Yeah, winding down. But guess what? We're gonna continue to speak life and keep moving forward. It is finished. It is done. It's still all about Him. But no matter what goes on. I don't care what pandemic going on. Y'all better learn how to stand. Simply trust and never doubt God. And most importantly, stay fat. F-A-C-T. Stay faithful. Stay available. Stay committed. And stay teachable. 
and laugh more too. Love harder. And be and just enjoy your life. Because guess what? When Jesus come back, all this is over. You ain't doing all this. So whatever you want to do, do it now. Whatever plans you got, y'all better put them in motion now. Amen. Love y'all so much. God bless y'all. I will be talking with some of you soon. Mwah, mwah, mwah. Cyber hugs. Y'all don't like these cybers, but Lord, I will. Guess what? Because I I'm standing on. I can't wait to meet some of you in person where we gonna hug, cry, have a good time together, and we gonna be through this thing on part like the Red Sea, honey. I'm I'm naming it claim this. This corona thing, it's going to part like it's just going to be gone. We're going to go to sleep and wake up and it's going to be gone in Jesus name. And people are going to get healed and delivered in Jesus name. And those that who have lost someone, you know, I know your heart is hurting because of this, but I just hold on to the Lord. Trust him. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy going to come in the morning. It's going to be over with. I promise you that because I believe the word. I believe God. And no matter what, you can depend on God. When everyone else fail, you can depend on God. Remember that. You can depend on God. Hallelujah. God bless you. Have a wonderful morning, noon, and afternoon. Amen.